Part 114 The Pledge of Divine Acceptance Uthman began to negotiate with the Quraysh, but the Muslims began to worry about the length of time he was in Mecca. Rumors began to spread that Uthman was hurt, and those rumors grew and eventually, it was said that he was killed. The Prophet was told definitively that Uthman had been killed, so he said, By Allah, we will not leave until he is avenged. A crier was sent out to the Muslims, notifying them that Jibrail descended, calling them to pledge an oath to the Prophet. Allah of course knew that Uthman was alive, but it was a test for the Muslims. The pledge was to fight the Quraysh until the death, with no option to retreat. This oath would be known as the Pledge of Divine Acceptance, Baya al-Ridwan. Ridwan can be translated as pleasure, but in this context is more accurately described as divine acceptance. As Allah revealed, Indeed, Allah was pleased with the believers when they pledged their allegiance to you under the tree. He knew what was in their hearts, so he sent down serenity upon them and rewarded them with a victory at hand. Surah 48, verse 18. He also revealed, Surely those who pledge allegiance to you are actually pledging allegiance to Allah. Allah's hand is over theirs. Whoever breaks their pledge, it will only be to their own loss. And whoever fulfills their pledge to Allah, he will grant them a great reward. Surah 48, verse 10. The Muslims were outnumbered by three to one, fatigued from their travel with minimal resources, and were not prepared for battle. But Allah demanded a pledge of allegiance. This is why the attendees of the Pledge of Divine Acceptance hold the highest station after the attendees of the Battle of Badr. The Prophet took an oath from every single attendee except for one hypocrite who was hiding behind his camel. Demonstrating his undying love and respect for Uthman, the Prophet took his left hand and clasped it in his right and said, This is for Uthman, that is, this is Uthman's pledge. He then said to his companions, you are the best people on earth right now. After he returned to Medina, he said, None who gave the pledge of divine acceptance under the tree will enter the fire of hell. Word reached the Quraysh that the Muslims had pledged to avenge Uthman, so they quickly sent him back alive and well. As Uthman returned, some of the Muslims remarked that Uthman must have enjoyed himself and performed tawaf, to which the Prophet said, I do not think he would while we are confined. The Prophet knew Uthman intimately and knew that he would not perform tawaf while the Muslims were deprived. Uthman finally arrived and someone jokingly remarked, Have you satisfied yourself? To which Uthman replied, What an evil thought you had of me. What an evil thought you had of me. Did you think I would perform tawaf while the Prophet was out here? By Allah, if I stayed in Mecca for one year, I would not perform tawaf until the Prophet did so first. This chapter is usually titled the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, but most of the companions referred to it as the Battle, Ghazwa, of Hudaybiyah, despite no actual fighting taking place. The fact that they did not fight but still counted it amongst their battles provides a useful insight into the mentality of the companions. As the Prophet said, actions are judged by their intentions.